Yeah, good morning, church. How are you today? It's a good day. It's a good day. Uh, how many video game fans out there? How many of you like playing a little video game every now and then? You know, I used, to, I used to like it as a kid. I'm kind of old school. I come from the Nintendo days where you had to blow in the cartridge to make it keep working. You know what I'm talking about? Woo! Man, before that, I, was like, I actually had something before that. It was called Texas Instruments. Anybody ever, ever heard of Texas Instruments? That's real old school. You are old if you remember Texas Instrument. The old T.I. had the, every character was like those four pixels that all, and everything looked the same, just game over. Yeah, I mean, it was bad. It was bad. Now it's crazy. But I remember my kids, they, they love video games. But I remember, I remember when they were little, I mean, honestly, like three or four years old. It's amazing what kids can do with technology nowadays. I, I don't get to play video games anymore, but they brought home a game. It was a Darth Vader game, and I'm into, we're, in a, we're a Star Wars family, and this game had a little globe, uh, like, you know, the, the whatever planet or whatever, and then you, had the, you actually had a, a lightsaber that you would play the game with, and, it, you know, it, I actually got into it. I got hooked on it. Like, I, they're three and four years old. This is daddy's son time. We're like, all right, we're going to play some games together. And then all of a sudden, I'm into it. And so for the next several days, I, it's intense. Like, stay away from the game. I'm doing this for you. I'm going to beat this thing just for you. I mean, and I was addicted to it. Finally got to Darth Vader level. I mean, it was serious. And I mean, it called for some major reflexes. Just boop, 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 boop. And I was into it. And I kept trying day after day. And they were watching. Like, Dad, I want to play the game. Just shut up. I'm playing. <laughs> and I remember the day finally came where I just had all these moves memorized. And I, you know, went into matrix mode, closing my eyes, just, you know, getting it done. And then, whoom, I remember the, the last hit when I beat Darth Vader. And I was, yes. I mean, I felt like a hero. And they were like, okay, can we play now, you know? And then, like, honestly, three days later, they had beat Darth Vader. And I was like, when did this happen? I used to think I was good. Now, two and three, four-year-old kids are uh, beating me down. I don't know what has changed in technology, but isn't it amazing what kids can do these days? It's absolutely amazing. Now... That, that stuff's old. It's just virtual reality. We're going virtual reality, y'all. The day will come where you come to church, you put on your headset, and we're going to walk around Jerusalem together. It's, it's crazy stuff that's coming, but it's just it's amazing, the technology. So I just wanted to take a couple of weeks and use a video game format to talk to you. Uh, the, the, the name of today's message and next week is called The Game of Life, Power-Ups and Pitfalls. This week, I want to give you some power-ups. Next week, I want to share with you some pitfalls to watch out for. So here's, here's the backdrop of these two messages. About 12 years ago, I encountered a professor who would forever change the rest of my life. He's had one of the most profound impacts on my life as anyone I've met. And when he got saved, when he, when he began his relationship with Jesus, he said, God just put this crazy desire to study the scripture and his study habits were unlike anything I've ever heard of it was absurd I've never heard of anyone who studied the Bible more than this man and it was well before sunrise into late at night his whole life he just could not get enough of studying the Bible brilliant man uh, began became a, a seminary professor and I got to sit under him and get to know him a little bit, and uh, it was very cool. I got to uh, talk with him a couple months ago, and I just, I actually called the school to do some research. His daughter works for the school. They happened to put her on the phone, and, and I was like, oh, your dad's like a hero of mine. And she, he's, she said, well, he's retired now. He's not doing anything, but I tell you what, I'm going to give you his, his phone number. You just give him a call and talk to him. And I was like, hello. You know, it, was, it was one of those really cool moments, and the cool thing is he sent me a DVD of his entire life work, thousands of pages of studies. It was such a gift and a treasure. So I just really uh, admire his, his body of work. And the thing is, he studied scripture just, it's amazing, but he was really drawn to looking at leaders in the Bible. 
And the sad thing is that he discovered is that as you read the Bible and you read the stories of people's lives, actually very few of us finish well. And so he was really curious, why is it, what is it that gets us, gets us off path? Or what prevents us from reaching our fullest potential? And so he gave his entire life to studying finishing well. What was it that stops us from finishing well? What are the pitfalls? That's what I'll share with you next Sunday. But what are the power-ups? He uncovered some cheat codes in Scripture. He uncovered some principles that he found were true of every person who finished well. They all had these things in common, and he began to teach these principles, and it was so amazing, such revelation as you began to see some of these things. So I wanted to teach you some cheat codes today. I wanted to give you a few power-ups because I want you to finish well. You're going to hear one of a couple things when you die. Either depart from me, I never knew you, or well done. I want to hear well done. I want to hear, come on in, well done, my son. Well done, my daughter. I want you to hear words of affirmation from your father that you finished well. The encouragement is, is that God intends for our last chapter in life really to be the very best. And so when, if you've messed up, if you've screwed up, have hope. It's not over yet. There's still a process. In fact, he, and let, me give you, let me give you power up Number one, cheat code number one, it is training mode. All right, let me tell you, I need to stop and test your mental abilities here just to kind of get an idea. How many absolutely brilliant people do we have in the crowd today? How many? All right, a couple, two, three. How many, how many, how many moderately intelligent people are in the crowd today? Moderately intelligent. All right, uh, very few hands have been raised at this point. Just how many straight up dumbos are out there? How many? All right. All right, at least we're honest. At least we're honest. This is just a quick little test of your mental abilities to see how well you think. Question number one, how do you put a giraffe into a refrigerator quickly? Partner up. What's the answer? It's simple, right? The answer is you just open the door, put in the giraffe, and close the door. Simple. Question number two, very similar. How do you put an elephant into the refrigerator? The answer is you open the door, take out the giraffe first, then put the elephant in the refrigerator and close the door. That is to test your memory. Question number three. The Lion King is hosting an animal conference. All of the animals attend except for one. Which animal does not attend? They very good. You're getting smarter as we go along. It's the elephant still in the fridge. <laughs> you just put them in there. And then finally, one final question. Here's, here's where you can make up your intelligence. There's a river you must cross, but it is used by crocodiles, and you don't have a boat. How do you get across? Swim. <laughs> Very good. The answer is, you just get in and swim. The crocodiles are at the animal conference. <laughs> that was really bad. I apologize for that. I just enjoy the looks of silliness faces. I told you. All right, here's the deal. Cheat code number one, power up number one, is simply to recognize you are still in training and to enter into training mode. Scripture describes us honestly. There's a, there's a few different ways Scripture des describes us. One is as sheep among the dumbest of animals. Another way is as clay of just a blob of clay. Isaiah says, you, God, you are, our, you are the Father. You are the potter and we are the clay. We are all the works of your hand. And so just like a master potter, God, from the moment we are born, begins to form and shape us into the person he intended us to be. But, our, this professor pointed out, in studying those who finish well, this is a lifelong process. The world is screaming at us when you're young and energetic. That's when you go out and make a difference. No, no, no. You're still stupid. All right? That's encouraging to me. 
Like all these things I'm wrestling with and wish I could overcome or do differently or, or understand or have patience with. I'm not supposed to. God's not finished yet. God's still shaping and molding and he is with you also. The difference in those who finish well and those who don't is you recognize this and you make yourself moldable clay. And that's not hard. Now, if you try to figure life out and do it all yourself, you will not finish well. You will hit your head against the wall. You'll try and try again. You'll get so frustrated and beat up. It's not going to happen. The idea is for us to die to ourselves. Say, God, I can't do it. I can't do it. Have your way in me, oh God. I'm just going to be a pile of clay. And then allow God by being obedient to whatever he, whatever he wants to shape today. Maybe it's your patience. Maybe it's your character. Maybe it's your integrity. Maybe it's this next challenge in front of you. The idea is simply to be obedient to the very last thing God has put in front of you. And through that, God forms you into the creation he intended. But it is a lifelong process. To learn how to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. The rest of your life is learning how to love God like that so that you can become what he wanted you to. Anybody in here totally mature and complete, lacking in nothing? Nope. How many of you got more work to be done? That's about all of us. If you didn't raise your hand, you got a lot of work to be done. All right, cheat code number one, power up number one is just training mode. Enter into training mode. Power mode number two, this is something probably none of us do, right? None of us do well, is using the pause button. So important. This convicts me every time I talk about it. The, uh, this professor who studied those who finished well, he said they all had this in common. They took the initiative to seek out personal rest and renewal. And we stinketh at this. We are in a culture that just demands more and more and more. Get it done, bottom line, be successful, be effective. And we just keep going and going and going. And then we even pride ourselves when we become workaholics. Oh, yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't slept in days. I've worked 80 hours this week. May God begin to change your heart to where that hurts your heart, where that convicts your heart. Rather than some, we shouldn't boast about something that God says is, is wrong. In fact, from the very beginning, he established a day of Sabbath where he said, you work at it, you work hard six days a week, and then you have a day where you do nothing but rest in my presence. Because God created these machines, God knows how they function, and he knows they are not designed to go and go and go without stop. And if we do it, we are killing ourselves. Those who don't finish well, they don't rest, and their life is cut short. And we take pride in that. I had a, a, a pastor I know who lived years ago. He wrote in his journal just before his death at a very young age. He said, God gave me a message to deliver, and I killed the horse like we just we don't rest and honestly when we don't rest and we don't seek renewal it's not because we're just hard workers it's honestly because we don't trust God we don't trust God to do it we think we have to do it ourselves so resting is just is as much about trusting him as it is anything it reveals the condition of your relationship if God tells you, you know, I want you to rest one day a week and you don't, you don't trust him. Nope, it's got to get done, God. If I don't do it, no one else will. So I don't want to be legalistic about it's got to be this day and this many hours and all that. The idea is to be intentional and, and really focused on seeking rest and renewal. Now, how many of you have ever had a boss or somebody come to you and say, you know what, you're just working so hard. I just want you to take a lot of time off. Anybody ever had that? If you have, thank, never leave that place. That's the greatest boss in the world. 
That's not our culture. That's not the norm. Most likely, no one will ever come to you and say, you know what, you're just working so hard. Take a break. Take a vacation. Go rest. That is on us. That is on us to have the discipline to pursue it ourselves. So when you came in the door, here's one, here's one offering to begin to establish this habit. When you came in the door today, you should have received a little card uh, about a group that I want to just offer to you this summer. Monday nights in June, I'm calling it Leader Fit. It started out, it was just going to be a small group, and then, I, and then I wanted to open it up to our team life. And then it was like, you know what, this is for everybody. So this is for anyone who wants to come. And the idea is I want to invest in you because I recognize we are one body and if any part of the body is unhealthy it affects all of us anybody ever pulled a muscle in your back it shuts down the whole body so I recognize we can keep going on minute if our focus is just on doing ministry we will ignore those who are uh, have a hurt back we will ignore the the torn ligaments among us so I, I believe if, if we will be healthy, if we are healthy, ministry will be healthy and fruitful. So I want to invest in you. So this summer, if it works for your summer schedule, the five Monday nights in June from 6 to 7.30, probably be right here, I want to just uh, give you some, some principles that honestly really help me. I just want to coach you a little bit. And I, I want it to be helpful to your everyday life, not just making you better Heritage Church members. I want you to be better. And so we'll cover everything from uh, study habits, how to be a, a proactive reader, to you can study better, communication skills, pastoral care principles. All of us have people to love on. So how do you approach someone when they're sick? How do you approach someone when they're dying? I want to help you be better ministers in that way. We'll talk about sharing our faith. We'll talk about team building and leadership skills. And we'll just have fun with this and break up in the small groups and discuss it. You'll have little, uh, you know, application uh, projects with it. Nothing too demanding, but I want to invest in you and make you better. And then at the end of that, sometime in mid-July, for those who want to, our staff is going to do a solitude retreat for a couple of nights, one weekend, and I would invite you to come along with us. It would be a couple of days largely of being alone with God in whatever way, praying, resting, writing, whatever way He leads you. But if you'd like to do that, we're going to, we, we're, we've kind of We'll cover a good percentage of the cost. Uh, it would be $99. That's an optional addition for anyone who wants to do that. So you've got that card. If that Monday night group in June works for you and you're interested, love for you to participate. This is for anyone. Um, just tear off the bottom of that card, and as you leave here today, there'll be baskets at the door. Just drop it in there so we begin to get an idea of how many people might participate with us. I'd love for you to join us. So, all right, here we go. Power up number one. What was it? Training, Training mode. Power mode. Power up number two. Pause button. The last one, power up number three, is Mighty Mentors. The professor who studied those who finished well said they all had this in common. Without fail, they all had people in their life that helped them become who they became. And any of you who are out there who don't like asking for help, you're hurting yourself. We need each other. And honestly, this, this professor taught a class on mentors. And on the first day, he asked the question, how many mentors have you had? And my honest to goodness, first response was, I haven't had any mentors because in my mind, I'm thinking Mr. Miyagi. I'm thinking the spiritual guru who has all of the answers. And I haven't met anybody like that. You know why? That person doesn't exist. But what he began to do was to take us through a journey of Scripture to show the different types of mentoring relationships that God provides to us if we will take advantage of them. And they are so critical. And by the end of this course, my eyes were like, I can't believe it. I've had hundreds of mentors. And everybody I see is a potential mentor. Because you, you think about it, he, he went from very intentional relationships like 
one-on-one -on -one disciplers who help you establish habits of the faith to, uh, you know, spiritual guides, those wise men and women who just you can call on and get seek counsel from. It may be an actual counselor to help, help you walk through a difficult situation. It could be a teacher who just has a lot of knowledge in a particular subject who's going to impart that to you. It could be a coach who's good at a particular skill who says, hey, I want to help you develop that skill. It could be a historical uh, mentor. Somebody who's already died but you can read about them and listen to them. It could be someone you never meet face to face, but you learn from them, from their life and their teaching, all the way down to even just a, an unplanned divine, con a divine appointment. Somebody that crosses your path. You didn't see it coming. You didn't plan on it. But in that moment, it changed the course of your life forever. And then maybe you never saw them again. Anybody ever had an experience like that? It's amazing when this happens. He used the example in Scripture of the Ethiopian eunuch when he had questions of Scripture and God sent Philip to his path. The man was baptized on the spot. Philip's gone, probably never spoke again. That is a gift from God when God sends someone to cross your path like that. That is someone that can change your course, change your destiny but the cool thing is, you can be that person for someone else. And that's, that's what I walk with now. It's like every person I meet, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, all right, God, is this a mentor for me or am I a mentor for them? I always get the same uh, uh, person at the checkout counter. What's the deal, God? Are they a mentor for me or am I a mentor for them? That waitress that you see in the restaurant, that person at the gas pump that strikes up conversation with you, the person you talk to waiting in line, all of these are potential life-altering opportunities for either you or that person. And so when you walk with this sense of these gifts of people, it changes uh, your daily perspective of everyone you meet. And it's great. It's cool. It's amazing. So... Power up number one, training mode. Power up number two, pause button. Power mode number three, mighty mentors. Mighty mentors. Now, let me quiz you a little bit. Let's look at some scripture verses. Partner up with somebody. Let's have a little competition. This side of the room, these three sections versus these three sections. I'm going to provide you a scripture verse. You tell me which one it is. Is it training mode? Is it pause button? Or is it Mighty Mentor? Just holler out your answer and tell me what you think. Verse number one, example number one. Paul says in Corinthians, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Mighty Mentor. Paul was a great mentor to Timothy and other churches. He just said, hey, you do what I do. And God will do in you what he does in me. Next one, very good, very good. And he said to them, come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. Ah, yeah, Jesus is calling his disciples to rest, calling them away. He says they were so, so busy they didn't have time to eat. Anybody ever been there? God may be calling you to that place of rest. All right, next. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, but, uh, but you're actually right. Uh, Remember your leaders who spoke the word. Uh, actually, no, you're wrong. You are wrong, all right? Mighty mentors. Somebody needs to hit the pause button over there. Um, that was an example. If you'll back up on that, if you'll back up on that, that is an example of like a historical mentor. The leaders have already uh, passed on, but he says, I want you to remember your leaders and what God did in them. Imitate their life and God will do that in you. All right, next one uh, from Joshua. It says, keep the book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so you may be careful to do everything written in it. Training mode, training mode. Let me, training mode is the way you grow in the training mode is to have that mentality that you are clay, but to give yourself to developing spiritual habits that will help you grow in the faith, all right? And if you'll notice our four priorities, Sunday worship, small groups, growth track, team life, that is really the heart behind growth track. It is helping you get established in habits and training to grow. 
And so the second Sunday of every month, we do Growth Track 2, and it's, all, it's specifically about four spiritual habits to grow. And it's the fourth Sunday of the month today, so today is actually Growth Track 4. We call it uh, Bearing Fruit, and this is to help equip you for ministry. So if you're not serving in ministry with us, hey, right after the service, come meet us across the hall. Lunch is on us, and we will help you connect with the ministry and do some training on the spot. So that, that is, that's what Grow Track is about, training mode, helping you get established and equipped. All right, a couple more, a couple more tricky ones. Let's see what you think. Uh, this one's not so tricky. Very early in the morning while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went to a solitary place where he prayed. Pause button, absolutely. It could be training mode, the discipline of prayer, but man, uh, to go to that solitary place. All right, next one. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to breaking the bread into prayer. Training mode. Training mode. Could also be mighty mentors. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, but training mode for sure, developing those habits of giving and prayer and, and fasting and breaking bread, community together. I think there's one more what you think here. This is Moses' father-in-law replied, a little tricky, what, are you, what you're doing is not good. You and these people who come to you will only wear yourselves out. The work's too heavy. You can't handle it alone. Listen to me and I will give you some advice and may God be with you. Mighty mentors, absolutely, absolutely. The situation there was Moses was trying to be the judge and work out everybody's problems of a few million people and he was stressed out. So Jethro came along and said, bro, you, you, you can't do this. And they set up judges and helped him delegate responsibility. A great mentor at the right time. If you will listen for help and ask for help, it will change your life. Think if Moses had spent the rest of his days saying, nope, I'm the one God put in charge. It's my responsibility. I'm going to do it. Moses would have died and we wouldn't know how the story ended for him. God would have brought in somebody else to carry out his work. A mentor can save your life. Ask frequently for mentors. I want to end the service today by recognizing a few of our mighty mentors. There's one, there's one other principle uh, that this professor uncovered and those who finish well, and this one's powerful. He said in every case that he studied in Scripture of those who finished well, in every single situation, their most powerful and significant years of life were their last few on earth. Think about this. The world screams at us, your best years of life are when you're young and energetic. you got to go. No, no, no. Not with God. It takes a lifetime of molding and shaping. And then when we are mature and complete, lacking in nothing, as Scripture says, then he positions us to do great ministry. And so uh, the last, for those of you who still feel, ah, I don't have it together, you're not supposed to. The best is yet to come. And I want to honor, here's what I want to honor today. If you have been married for 50 years or longer, we didn't get to do this in our marriage series, but I wanted to just take a moment to thank you for your faithfulness, for your perseverance, for your unity, for your love. If you've been married 50 years or longer, and that means if, if you're here and your spouse is not, maybe your spouse is going to be here, maybe they passed away, but you were married 50 years or longer, would you mind coming forward and just coming up here? And I just want the church to be able to see who you are. I want to thank you for your faithfulness. Come on down, everybody. Who we got? We got the chances. We got the barbers. I told, I told the barbers to come on down. You're about to celebrate 50 years. You are close enough. So come on down, barbers. Y'all check this out. Check this out, y'all. If 50 plus years of marriage doesn't deserve a big old round of applause, I don't know what does. Yeah, absolutely. Woo! I want y'all. I want y'all to turn and face everybody because y'all. I want you to get a good look at everyone up here. These are mighty mentors. 
if you're married, single, whatever, these are people. Uh, like somebody said, first service, you can't go 50 years of marriage without God all over your life, all right? So these people have, have been there. They, they fought the good fight, and they have so much to give to us. So please seek them out. Don't be guilty. Don't get to heaven and say, God, I just didn't have any help. Oh, my goodness. I don't want to stand close to you when the lightning bolt strikes, all right? They're right here in front of us. And I ask all of you, would you please give yourself away? You're just now entering your best season of life. Would you just give yourself away to us? We need you. We need your input. We need your wisdom. We need your guidance. We need you to mentor us. So we thank you for that. You can be seated just a moment because I want to show y'all. Y'all just stick right there. This is what we're going to do. Uh, down by the prayer table. Yeah, y'all hang out. Uh, just one, out and thank you, buddy. You just, yeah, I, I messed up. I messed up. Listen, um, if you've been down to our prayer chapel, if you'll put that blueprint up there, we're working on just some uh, designs to develop that a little bit. If you look to the right of the chapel there, we're, we're de beginning to develop a prayer garden, and, and we just have a dream of it being our finishing well prayer garden. And so one of the things we want to do is to plant a tree in honor of every marriage that makes it to the 50-year mark and beyond. And so we will have this plaque down there, and this is what it says. This tree's been planted in honor of those who celebrate 50 years of marriage. Thank you for modeling unity and sacrificial, unconditional love. You inspire us all to finish well in life and in marriage. And then it says in Jeremiah 17, Blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. So I'm going to ask every couple here who, is, is we're, who we're honoring today, as you leave, would you stop by guest services? We just have a little slip of paper. We want to get your names and the date that you got married, and they will be positioned. You'll be among the first to be on a plaque, and we'll just keep adding plaques until Jesus comes to celebrate whenever somebody hits the 50-year mark. Can we give them a big hand, everybody? Thank y'all. You can be seated. You can be seated now. You can be seated now. Um, that's, we had to do a little bit of, of tricking and lying this week that I will confess because we had to, uh, we wanted to do one more thing. Uh, it's, it's, it's become a tradition. Because this principle of finishing well has become such a strong value of ours, and finishing well has to do with you start finishing well now. When you leave a relationship, when you leave a job, make it a point to finish well. Don't burn bridges, especially in a small town. If you're leaving a job, hey, leave well. If you leave a relationship, leave well. If you haven't left well, go back. In fact, when people come to our church and say, hey, I want to be a member, we ask, were you part of another church? Did you leave well? If not, you got some work to do first. Well, I don't want your junk coming here, all right? If you left junk, you're going to bring junk. So leave well in everything that you do. Develop the habit of finishing well. And about once a year or so, we like to recognize the, uh, someone who embodies finishing well. They are beginning to enter a season of finishing well, and they model character of Christ, and, uh, and today we want to honor a couple who means as much to us as any couple could, and I want to invite back uh, Bill and Bonnie Edwards. Will you come on back down here for just a minute? Um, I'm sorry, I had to lie to you this week. You scared me when you show up first service. I was like, oh my goodness, because we got, we got people lined up. For, come on up here, Bill and Bonnie. If you don't know, Bill and Bonnie was part of our original leadership team that started the church. So I want you to watch this. And while they do, I'm going to invite the leadership team, the mission board, to come on out as we just thank God for Bill and Bonnie who are receiving the Finishing Well Award this year. Check out this video.
Bill and Body first came into my life when I was 11 years old. I was in a small group Miss Bonnie had called Chosen Treasures. From an early age, she took an interest in me and showed me attention. And that made me feel like the world, that she would take her time, even with four kids and so many grandkids, and invest time in me, to spend time sitting down with me, teaching me the word, um, allow me to come into her home on a weekly basis, and making me important and making me a priority. It just, it made me, it, I felt God's love through the time that she spent with me as a child. And that has been something that I look back to and has been a foundation for who I am today as a woman in Christ. What a blessing it was to, to be raised in a Christian home and uh, just to have godly parents. And sometimes when we were young, we didn't appreciate it as much, but as we grow up, we realize that the influence of having a relationship with God and having the, uh, the Bible studies and learning, having the importance of learning the Word and memorizing scriptures, and now it makes a huge difference in all of our lives because we have the same desire to have a relationship with God. So I just want to thank, thank you, Mom and Dad, for our godly heritage. What an awesome opportunity to be able to thank my parents for just a great life they have given me. Probably the best thing that uh, has been coming to me about this is the phrase or whatever, second chances. And uh, I sure had my fair share of them. Uh, you might want to call it three, fourth, and five chances. And, um, but every time, no matter what I've thrown at my parents, it seems like it's just, uh, it's always been open arms. No matter what the situation, good or bad, it's both, it ends up being the exact same way. Arms open, telling me we got this and we're gonna be able to handle it together. Thank you, I love you. Mom and Dad, I am so honored that you are getting this award. And it has been an absolute blessing to just see everything that has happened in our family. Just the closeness that we've always had and we're all still together, I love you. Mom and Dad, I wanted to come and uh, bless you today. I want to give you thanks for the way that you loved me and cared for me as I was growing up. In Proverbs, it says, raise a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, it will not depart from him. I think uh, to, to say that a little bit differently, I always believe that it's raise a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, it will not depart from him. So uh, I believe through all the rebellion, uh, through all the disciplines, through all the uh, uh, conversations that we've had, it has not departed from me. Bill and Bonnie Edwards, what a pair. I used to play foosball in college and man, I enjoyed it and uh, thought I was pretty good at it and realized I really was good at it when I came to Moultrie and beat Bill Edwards at foosball. It was a special time. But the most special thing that came out of that was that I got to go meet his wife. When Robbie and Bonnie began singing years ago in the 1980s, um, we were knit together in a really special way. She's meant so much to me personally, to our children, and Bonnie is a person that if you ask her to pray for you, you know that request is going before the throne of uh, the Heavenly Father. Yeah. I was at Bonnie and Bill's house preparing for a bridal shower, and one of her grandsons, her, her beloved grandchild, was over there. Um, and Bonnie pulls him to the side, opens the Bible, and starts sharing a scripture with his grandson. There was someone cleaning the house, we were doing flowers, but Bonnie knew that that was the moment that she was to share that scripture with that young man. And that's just the way she lives. She lives on the Word of God, and Bill does too. He's been a faithful servant of God and a true friend for all those years. And um, I remember him going through his um, bout with, with uh, cancer and sickness, and he, uh, he beat it. And uh, he gives God the praise and the glory. And uh, he told me, Robbie, if I don't beat it, he says, I'm still okay. He says, I'm going to be with Jesus. And I've seen him during hard times. He'd tell me, Robbie, hard times will make me better. It'll teach me something that I need for the future. And I've seen that as an, in his life over and over. You mean so much to us and to everybody in this church, in this country, and around the world from the things you do. 
We love you. So Bill and Bonnie are joined on stage by their children and their spouses and some of their grandchildren and some of their adopted children and uh, the mission board and, and some members of the leadership team. Uh, my name is Roy Rees and I get the privilege of serving as the chairman of our leadership team uh, here at Heritage. And for those of you who don't know, Bill and Bonnie are one of the founders of Heritage Church. And that was about 19 years ago. Uh, and over the last 19 years, they have continued to serve the Lord in so many ways through so many different ministries. But obviously, Heritage has been the, the ministry that's been the vehicle where they have served the Lord the most in the last 19 years. And there's so many things I could say personally uh, about those 19 years, and we could just take the rest of the day to do that and I but I just wanted to mention a couple things about uh, Bill and Bonnie there is no telling how many times you guys have opened your home for ministry things um, in the early days of the church whenever somebody joined the church we all ate one time at Bill and Bonnie's house and I know there's a lot of you who've done that but just groups over and over and over again and then there's no telling how many meals Bonnie has either prepared or helped prepare or organize for people in our church um, who have been through a tough time, a time of sorrow. And then I would just like to say for Bill, I appreciate him so much. I'm not going to look at you. <laughs> As a friend, he and I have been through a lot together over many, 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 many years. And I just hope, you don't see it, but behind the scenes, he serves as an overseer for our church. Not up front, behind the scenes. And it is so incredible to have a man of his stature, his wisdom, his input, his knowledge, his strength, and his positive attitude just to serve with and be on a team with and to help oversee what goes on in this church. And so personally, I can't think of anybody more deserving to get the Finishing Well Award than Bill and Bonnie Edwards. And now I'm going to turn it over to Steve Smith, who's the chairman of our mission board. All right. Um, Bill and Bonnie, we just want to... Thank you so much for the service that you've given to the church. Um, Bill has been a great friend. Uh, he is the past chairman of the mission board. And about two years ago, Bill and I sat down, had a very frank conversation, and he said to me, Steve, do you still need me on this mission board? And I looked Bill straight in the eye and I said, Bill, we can't do this without you. And I'm going to tell you why. There are, there are two things that stand out major for me anyway. One, the first one, Bill has tremendous insight. And I'm going to tell you what type of insight. Sometimes... We can't see over the hill. And we make alliances or partnerships with other people, other organizations. Bill has a knack to see whether it's going to bring fruit or there's going to be calamity. And so we need Bill. Secondly, Bill is a consummate encourager. He never sees the glass half empty. He will always find the one good thing to say. And so in this time of change in the mission board and where God has, is carrying us, we need somebody of your stature. We need somebody of your wisdom and insight and encouragement to keep moving us along. So in honor of both of them, Bill and Bonnie, 
in the grounds to go, um, our new cafe, so to speak, there is going to be a uh, wall of the world which is going to show everywhere our mission board, everywhere our missionaries are in the world. And all the proceeds from the grounds to grow will be to our homegrown missions. And so with that, I want to pray for you. And what I did, I took this prayer out of Numbers chapter 6. Numbers 6, verse 22 to 26. And what I did, I picked out some words and I looked at the meaning of these words and kind of expanded the prayer so you can kind of get an understanding of what um, this means. This is the blessing of the people of Israel by God through Moses. And the Lord said to Moses, speak to Aaron and his son, saying, this is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, and so I'm going to say it to you, Bill and Bonnie, the Lord adores you, Bill and Bonnie Edwards family. The Lord keeps charge over you and preserves you. The Lord's presence goes before you and gives you light so that wherever you go, you can see. The Lord shows favor upon you, Bill and Bonnie Edwards family. The Lord will be with you, before you, behind you, and in the midst of you. The Lord will give you friendship with God and with man. He will see to your welfare and prosperity. I will do this for you, says the Lord. I will establish your family says the Lord. So with that, we bless you, Bill and Bonnie. Amen. All right, everybody, the way we're going to close <clears throat> is uh, I'm going to let, I've asked Bill if he would close us in prayer, just a blessing for us. If, you, if you're new and haven't had a chance, there's no way you can know the sacrifices that this family, that this couple has made so that we could be here today and, and enjoy church together. So you, you're like a, a second mom and dad to me, which I don't think is special because I think there's a lot of people here who would say the same thing. If Bill and Bonnie has impacted your life in some way, would you just give a clap or a shout or something like that? So... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask that Bill close this out by blessing us. Just a couple quick reminders as you leave. Love for you to join us for Growth Track 4. If you want to be a part of the summer group, you can leave that in the baskets. And if you're our guest and want to begin connecting with us, grab a connection card off a chair and drop by, drop by guest services as you leave as well. But Bill and Bonnie, we love you. We thank you. How do you want to close this out? Oh. I'd rather just leave, but <laughs> I will, since I've got my family up here, the ones, I told Billy one time, every time they sozo, I think, oh, Lord, it's going to come back to me. So I just want to apologize now. Whatever I did, I didn't know better, and I'm sorry. So um, this is humbling, to say the least, but I can, I can say this. It has been encouraging. The message that you shared this morning is one you shared three years ago. And it impacted my life that we had the opportunity because of that covenant relationship with him that the best years are ahead of us and not behind us. And it has been my goal, especially since hearing that message, that we would finish well, Bonnie and I. And I can honestly say our marriage is better than it's ever been after 50, what, one and a half years or however long it is. But we, we dated for 54 or 5 years, so I don't know anybody but Bonnie, really, come to think about it. <laughs> but um, I'm thankful, and I'm thankful for my family. It is uh, to be in a town. Most people I know, they don't get to see their grandchildren, but ever so often because they meet once or twice a year, and we're blessed to be in the same community. So I thank you for that. Now, and I thank you for this honor. I, you. I think it's because I'm married to Bonnie. I'm probably up here, but that's all right. Whew, let's bow our heads. Father, as we come to you, I, 
I do thank you for the encouragement of that message this morning, that because of that covenant relationship with you, that if we pursue you with our whole heart, that our best years could be ahead of us and not behind us. Yes. So that's what I pray for each person here. We're in their personal relationship with you. I pray they pursue you. I pray that they have a longing to know you better and to, to love your word and to be involved in a way that can make their life full and complete. And in the hard times that they know that you're always there, they can trust you. And I can tell you in my own life, it's not how much I love you, it's how much I know that you love me that gives me a confidence and a trust in you for the future. I trust you with my children and my grandchildren and my wife and my family and my church and our relationships. So I pray for each person here. Lord, I thank you for them. I pray that each person here pursues you. I pray that they are encouraged in knowing that the best is yet to come, and they have the honor and the privilege of serving a God that will help them finish well, and that these will be the best and most productive years of our life, whatever age they are. So, Father, we love you. Thank you for all that you mean to us. Thank you for this church. Thank you for relationships and the body of Christ. And we just say that this, our best, is yet to come to. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you, church. Thank you. Love on Bill and Bonnie before you leave. <laughs>